Thank you very much, Dr. Yes. And uh, this research is uh, part of a um, research project sponsored by the California Department of Transportation, where we were to um, evaluate the deterioration causes of the concrete box girder bridges. And a part of this analysis was the live load analysis of this concrete uh, bridge decks. And um, the authors of this um, presentations are Dr. Kmieleski, Dr. Novak, and myself, Sylvia Stavska. So I will begin with the problem statement. So we see the rapid bridge deck deterioration, and there is a need to uh, determine what are the causes of this deterioration. One of them might be the increased um, number of heavy traffic. So based on our analysis, uh, when using rain motion data, um, 10 to 15% of the tracks are overloaded. Also, uh, there is an uh, increasing number of the issued permit uh, vehicles, and we see the annual growth of uh, 6 to 10%. And the other reason is that design loads for the decks were not calibrated. So there is a need to verify this model. Nowadays, we have access to the massive wane motion data, and we have information about the wheel load, which can be used for the transverse analysis of the decks. And that can result in the calibration of the live load, a factor needed for the bridge deck analysis. In order to uh, develop a de deck live load model, we need the following steps. First, we need to calculate what are the live load effects in the transverse direction uh, using the wane motion data. And uh, also we need the uh, traffic extrapolation to determine what is the maximum expected loading. Another step is to find the statistical distribution feeding and determine what is the service life of a deck. Then we can develop statistical parameters for the live load, uh, which include the bias factor, which is the ratio of the mean value to the nominal, and also coefficient of variation that can lead to the calibration of the live load factor. So if we want to develop statistical parameters for the live load, the first step is to collect and process brain motion data. The data needs to be filtered and uh, processed by the quality control analysis. In this case, we use the Wayne Motion data for California, where we have over 365 million records. And from there, we uh, conducted the quality control analysis, where 15% of the data was discarded due to the uh, errors that they were there. And when we have the reliable Wayne Motion data, we can compute what are the live load effects on decks and in transverse direction. So having the information about the left and right wheel load, we can run uh, the influence line analysis and find what are the maximum uh, moment and shear effects. When we have this, we can determine live load ratios. And what are the live load ratios? Are the ratios of the existing traffic from the wane motion data and compared to the after track. Having bad distributions for the live load ratios, uh, we can determine statistical parameters of the deck, deck load. In order, to, in order to do it, we need to find what is the distribution, select this distribution type, and also inform have the information about the uh, bridge specific average daily tra traffic per lane and determine what is the return period for the deck analysis. And having all of that, we can find what are the statistical parameters of live load. And in uh, next slides, I will um, talk a little bit more about this development of statistical parameters. So starting from the live load uh, effects uh, in, in transverse direction, we use the California way in motion data. And for each uh, track, we selected the maximum axle load and we uh, we have taken the left and uh, right wheel and run the influence analysis for the two continuous spun model. And we, uh, we found what is the maximum uh, positive and negative moment and shear using the influence line analysis. This analysis was um, conducted for the various spacings of the bridges representative for the specific California box girder bridges. When we found that what is the live load envelope, 
uh, we were able to um, find the live load ratios. So here we can see uh, on the first um, figure ratio of the positive moment ratio for weighing motion track divided by the after track for the spacing of 10 feet. Different colors on this, on this plot represent different weighing motion locations. And we did this for uh, over 22 weighing motion station and uh, various spacings for the positive uh, moment ratio, shear and negative moment ratio. The next step is the live load extrapolation. So this is needed um, to predict what is the expected live load uh, for the specific time and the traffic volume. So we need to find N and what is N? N it's a uh, return period in days multiplied by traffic volume. So um, to find this, if we if our uh, return period or the service life of a deck is um, set as 50 years, we use the 50 years and we multiply by 365 days in a uh, year and multiply by the ADTT at the bridge. So uh, when we calculate this, we are getting expected number of tracks in a given time and the traffic volume. And this is needed to determine what is the probability of exceeding the maximum uh, way in motion based live load. Next step is the fitting distribution. And in this analysis, we uh, conducted um, the distribution fitting analysis for um, 15 different types of the distribution. And the fitting procedure was applied to every way in motion station and a wide range of the spacing you know, for the So uh, when we look at the feeding uh, distribution and we selected um, uh, some distribution feeding and we can see on this plot the moment uh, ratio, we can see that some of the distribution are um, overly conservative uh, and they are flattening at the upper tail as log normal and gamma distribution. But if we look at the extreme value distribution, this may be an underestimation. So for all of the weighing motion stations and all the spacing, we found what are the statistical parameters for the specific uh, return period and the um, uh, average daily tra traffic. And we created this uh, box plot for the feed distribution. So the main goal of the development of statistical parameters is uh, for them to be consistent throughout, this, uh, throughout the traffic within the state or national for the representative uh, bridges. And in this case, uh, we consider several distributions and for them we check what is the spread of the load ratio uh, for the way in motion and designed by Ashton. And log normal distribution was selected as uh, was providing a consistent statistical parameters throughout the uh, California traffic and various types of bridges. Next is the average daily truck traffic per lane. And here is the distribution of the traffic in California. And California traffic has very high uh, volume in comparison to all of the other states uh, that we've been working on. And based on this analysis, we selected several different average daily truck traffic varying from 1,000 to 6,000. And the next step is to determine the service life or return period. So Ashto specify um, service life of a bridge as a 75 years, but a service life for the deck has not been specified. And in practice, it varies considerably. And it depends on the geographical location, proximity to the seaside, a freeze and thaw, um, and many others. So what we've done is we use the info bridge data, and we had data about all of the bridges in the United States from 1983 to 2020, and we check what is the deck age at the first major maintenance activity. So how did we do it? Uh, we consider that major maintenance activity for the deck is when the deck rating increase of two points or more from one year after to another. And so uh, looking at the distribution here, uh, we can say how we can interpret this. So if we have 50% of the bridges and we look at California, we see that 50% uh, of the bridges 
had uh, the major uh, maintenance activity before they reached um, uh, the age of 40 years. Uh, also, we can see that US data and California data are very similar. So in this case, we also consider several, several different return periods for the um, development of statistical parameters varying from 10 years to 50 years. And here are the results uh, of the bias factor for different uh, load effects. So looking at the first uh, graph, um, we can see that uh, this bias factor was determined for the return period of 40 years with the average daily track traffic or 4,000. And on the X axis, we can see different spacing and it varies from four to 14 feet. And on the Y axis, we have the positive moment ratio and wind track to the Ashton track, which uh, in other words can be called bias factor. Different colors on this plot represent uh, um, different way in motion stations. And what we can uh, say about this uh, bias factors is that they vary significantly from site to site, but within, uh, within the site, they are very consistent for the different spacing. The same we can say for the negative moment and also the shear. So taking all of the different uh, parameters, we can find statistical parameters for different uh, return periods. So as I mentioned before, spacing for the bridges in California were selected from 4 to 14 and uh, return periods from 10 years to 50 years. And we calculated what is the bias factor and what is the coefficient of variation. And the bias factor varied from 1.21 to 135 for all of the cases when we consider that average daily truck traffic is 4,000 and the coefficient of variation was uh, 11 to 13 percent. That's for the but if we look at the statistical parameters for different uh, average daily tra traffic uh, for the return period of 40 years, uh, we can see that the bias factor uh, varies from 1.2 to 1.34, and the coefficient of variation is 11 to 13 percent. So having that uh, statistical parameters, we came to the following conclusions. Uh, so we have access to the massive traffic um, data that include the wheel load. So we have available data to develop a live load model. And that was done for the transverse analysis for California traffic, where the bias factor for California traffic varied from 1.18 to 135. And the coefficient of variation was 11 to 13%. And recommended statistical parameters for California are bias factor 1.25 and the coefficient of variation 12%. And this is uh, just at the beginning of uh, what can be done for the DEC um, live load modeling, having this data and having these possibilities to uh, conduct reliability-based uh, analysis and update the current ASHTO provisions. So development of the statistical model just for the one track can serve as a basis for the future reliability-based calibration of live load for concrete uh, depth. And this um, analysis was conducted for this California project, where one of the um, factors that were um, considered for the depth deterioration was the live load model and the calibration and reliability was also, uh, that is all that I have for uh, this presentation. Uh, please, if you have any questions. Thank you, Sylvia. I appreciate that very much.